In this video, I'm going to be telling you what is the best daily trainer so far of 2023 and why. trainer shooter yes currently just working through a versus mini series i'm um, doing loads of videos comparing loads of shoes but i also wanted to do a video today looking at the best daily trainer so far i think of 2023 now there's loads of options out there there's so many good shoes out there and i think there's shoes that probably i'm not going to even include in uh, today's video but they are very very good shoes um and we'll, maybe we'll touch on them as part of this but uh, there's a couple of shoes that have come out this year that have been phenomenal and I think are really, really good daily trainers. Okay, so a good example of a shoe that's not going to be in this video is the Go Run Ride 11. I really, really like the Go Run Ride 11, but I think it's kind of limited in terms of its mileage. It's one of those shoes that you can sort of walk to Tesco's in, walk the dog, but then do three miles, maybe a bit of park run, that sort of stuff, which I think is good for a daily trainer. But I'm looking at daily trainers that can do pretty much everything. Um, that you can do your easy stuff, your recovery stuff, your sort of slightly quicker stuff, and then move you into those sort of longer runs if you're doing like half marathon or marathon training. Now, another shoe that's not here is the Nova Blast 3, which is a shoe from ASICS, which is a good shoe, but it was out last year, so I've not included that. So can you see already there's some, there's some omissions that, I've not, uh, that I'm missing, but for good reasons. Okay, so also let's do disclaimers now. Most of these shoes have been sent to me, but obviously I'm not picking these shoes because they've been sent to me. I'm picking these shoes based on those things that I was just talking about. They've got to be able to offer to be able to do all of those bits and do those bits well. I'm not getting paid for this um, and I'm not getting a script or anything from any of the manufacturers. In fact, they've got no idea that I'm making this video. Right, okay, so with that out of the way, let's dive in. Okay, so how this is going to work, I'm going to run through a couple of shoes quickly. Um, we won't go too detailed into the stats and features, we'll just talk briefly about them. Uh, and then at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you sort of my top two, probably, um, out of these shoes that I'm going to talk about today. Okay, so the first shoe is the Cloud Surfer, one of the most popular daily trainers uh, of the year. We've got the Cloud Phase, they've got rid of the speed board out of it, it's a nice wide platform. Uh, I think it's about 150, 160 pounds here in the UK. It's got a really nice upper on it. And it's a lot softer than um, previous uh, on-running shoes, but it is, is a really good daily trainer, uh, but probably more towards that sort of up-tempo work, I would say. It's a, it's a faster shoe, but it can do some of the longer stuff. Although, for me personally, I wouldn't necessarily do a 20-miler in it. Next up, we've got one of the world's most comfortable shoes, which is the Nimbus 25. We've got the Flight Phone Blast Plus in the shoe. We've got over 40 mil of stack. Jacquard mesh upper. Uh, the outsole is terrible, it's a half plus. Although it seems to be out to last for quite a while, it is not very good in the rain. The shoe fits true to size, but it is quite heavy. This shoe is over 11 ounces. Okay, next up and sticking with ASICs, we've got the Cumulus. Uh, we've got a stripped down Nimbus, I would say. We've still got Flight Foe Blast Plus. Reduced stack height, Jacquard mesh upper. Same terrible outsole. Uh, and yeah, that's probably about it for this shoe. Price, £145. The uh, Nimbus, Nimbus 25, was £175, which is a bit rich. Okay, next up, we've got the Energy Float Ride number five. Uh, increased stack, we've got Energy Foam, carbon rubber outsole, um, what else? New introduced torsion system in it, a little bit of lateral support, and that's probably about it. Oh, no, big thing with this show, £85. Okay, then we've got the Ride 16, which is basically the Ride 15, but we've got a very nice uh, new upper on the shoe. Much more sort of expensive feeling with the additional uh, suede and just overlays. It just feels a much uh, higher quality upper on the shoe. Still got the Power Run midsole, still got the terrible XT900 outsole, £130 here in the UK. And that's probably about it for the Ride 16. 
Okay, then we've got the Forever Run um, Nitro from Puma. Now, this is a slight guidance shoe. I've included it in daily trainers. Uh, although it's got some guidance in it, it's not out-and-out -out stability. Why well, it's kind of snuck in to this. Uh, we've got Nitro Foam. We've got the Run Guide System. Nice wide platform with Puma grip. Fits true to size. Uh, from memory, it's over 10 ounces. And that's probably about it for this shoe. Okay, the Saucony Triumph 20s in here. We've got 21, uh, I know, but uh, the Saucony Triumph 20 is still very much the same shoe. It's just got to have an upper upgrade. We've got Power Run Plus midsole. We've got XT900 on the outsole. Uh, this is a shoe that's probably more designed for longer miles, but this is definitely a shoe that you can do very much everything in, which is why it's been included in the daily trainers. And our last shoe in this sort of list is the Max Road 6. Now, I've included this because you can do most of the stuff. Um, as I said, easy, recovery, long, some goal pace work in there. Uh, it's not overly fast, obviously, because of the amount of stack. And it's 41 mil. It's a max stack shoe. But I do feel that it's worth including because you can do pretty much everything in it. We've got Gucci Rubber, we've got a nice mesh upper, we've got Hyperburst Ice and Hyperburst uh, 1.0, giving it a bit of a frame. We've got Arch Fit on the shoe, and yeah, oh yeah, we've got the um, carbon infused plate up the front, and yeah, I think it offers something a little bit different to the norm. Woo, okay, right, so that's all the shoes, and then let's sort of drill it down now to, what should we do? A top three? Yeah, let's do a top three of the shoes um, so far in 2023. What is the best daily trainer so far this year? Okay, so number three is the Nimbus 25. This would have won if it was not 175 pounds. I just love the comfort of this shoe. It's insane how comfortable this shoe is. It doesn't feel over 11 ounces in terms of weight. I just love the feel of it. It just feels incredible and it is just a great, running shoe it really really is people this is a fantastic daily trainer but it's just too expensive now in second place i'm going to go with the ride 16 and the reason i'm going with the ride 16 is because it is a stripped down back to basics good daily trainer i think at 130 pounds uh, it offers reasonable value you're going to get it cheaper than that the upper update is great on it the midsole is good on it it's not overly um, exciting, it's not overly awesome, but it does everything you want in a daily trainer just very, very well. It's probably the most competent shoe out of all of the uh, shoes that we've had today in this video. Uh, the only thing that lets this down is the outsole. The outsole on this is no good at all. But then you could say about probably last year's winner, which was the Nova Blast, that also had a terrible outsole. Now the winner for me is this, the Energy Float Ride number five. And the reason I'm picking this is because it's 85 pounds. I think at 85 pounds, you're not gonna beat it for value. Um, yes, you could pick up some of last year's models, but I'm looking at current models in this video. I think the increased stack height is very welcome. We've got the Energy Foam, which is a really nice uh, ride. It's very wide. We've got a phenomenal outsole. This carbon rubber outsole is fantastic, people. It grips and it lasts. We've got the inclusion of the torsion system, which is aided in terms of the stability. So if you have some mild stability issues, this shoe is gonna work for you. We've also got a little bit of lateral support uh, built into the upper as well. It's comfortable, it's lightweight, but like I said, it's 85 pounds. And that's why this shoe is probably, or is the daily trainer of 2023 at the moment. I think this is gonna be hard to beat. But I do have to give one shoe a shout out before we leave today. And that is this, the Puma Forever on Nitro. I think this is a really good shoe, people. I really do. It didn't make the top three um, because I kind of held it back because I knew that I was going to give it a bit of a special mention. This is a really good daily trainer. This knocks the socks off of a Pegasus 40. This is a really, really good um, daily trainer, people. It has mild guidance in it, okay? So I think this is uh, something for somebody who needs a stability shoe-ish as well. And that's where it offers that versatility of the sort of neutral to sort of stable wearer. The only reason it didn't win is because uh, of the other shoes that I've mentioned and the plus points that they have. But this probably, if you wrapped those three shoes up, yeah, into one package, you'd probably come out with this. And that's why I wanted to give it a special mention at the end of the video. But the Reebok Energy Flight Ride number five is the best daily trainer so far of 2023. Let me know in the comments whether you agree, disagree. Let me know down there. 
Right, that's it, people. I've got to get back to filming versus videos, so I'll catch you later.